Well, the neuromorphs are a large group of diverse um, researchers, scientists from around the world. We are interested in studying the intersection of where engineering and neuroscience and cognitive science come together. All kinds of people interested in how the brain works. We're trying to understand how to build cognitive systems. Uh, the neuromorphs are people who are interested in two, kind of two fields which are normally very far apart from each other. Their common interest is really in trying to understand uh, how the brain computes. Are those that actually started using technology to make artificial systems, actually looking at the brain and the neurons. In these three weeks we get all the people, all the neuromorphs in the world that work on these things together and we exchange ideas. We have engineers, we have biologists, we have neuroscientists, we have people who are really involved in different areas in their home research uh, institutions. And so um, kind of the idea really is that we can take this opportunity to play around and learn uh, a lot of different techniques from different people. Some people want to you know, make things that work in the real world, want to make products. Some people are interested in just understanding how the brain works and they use the technology as a tool to make progress in basic research, basic science. Um, what makes our group unique really is that the things, the, the models that we're trying to develop or understand or, or implement really are, we're trying to test neural algorithms in practical situations. Why are we doing this at all, right? Why this is useful at all? So there's the, the obvious answer is to understand the brain, how we work. And that has uh, tremendous implications. It has tremendous implications when you're talking about computation. We are tremendously effective and efficient in many tests that computers fail. We have to be able to build machines that can interact in the environment the same way that humans or animals, dogs and cats and so on do. We're trying to understand how when you make a motor system move the robot, how it feeds back directly in real time to the sensory information. And oftentimes what you find is that when you have a robot interacting with the world in real time, the, the problem actually changes. How do you build machines that can really you know, work in the environment the way that we do? Completely easy for, uh, for us to do. It's very hard to build in a machine, and that's what we're trying to do. Anytime you build hardware or a system that can work in real time and solve a problem like um, tracking or discrimination or using attentional systems, um, they advance the state of the art in understanding larger autonomous systems. If we understand actually the brain, we can actually help in, in helping the ones that have uh, problems, for instance, they had lesions in the brain, that have a traumatism, they had a stroke, etc. So these people, or they have some sort of neurological disease. The point of being here is really to, to learn, to try and understand something about how the brain works and not just how it works, but how would we build it. And all together, which as a big family, we try to make progress.